Hello guys, it is Eric here again. Um, I finally found a little bit of time where I have our dorm room to myself. My roommate isn't here, so that's find some quiet time. It's good. Uh, sorry for some of the background noise. We have three computers running and two people usually in this room. It still is super cold, so we have our heater on. Uh, so I'm not super shivery while making a video, because that's not fun. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, let's get on to this tutorial, which I will be covering, uh, custom packets, uh, between, uh, buckets, bigot, and your client. Also did not really write a script for this video, so we'll see how this goes. Um, my plan is to split this into multiple parts, um, so the video will be... I don't know, you know, 10, 20 minutes long, each part of it, but it's not going to be like a three hour video. Here's everything with packets. I'm going to try to like shorten it down because I feel like no one's going to want to watch a three hour video covering every single little detail about packets when someone wants to like implement two things and then be done with it, you know? Uh, so yeah, today I'll just be, um, like how to go, how to get packets registered into the client. Um, just like a very simple packet. And then next tutorial will probably be using that simple packet and sending it from one person to the other. And fuck it. So, yeah. I did not explain that well. Anyway, okay, I really should start. Um, yeah, so let's go into our client package and create a new one. Let's just call it packets. P A C K T S packets. Um, yeah, I don't have a better name. So let's make a packet, um, which is going to be a base class, which is going to be called EC packet. And I'm going to make it abstract. And I am, let's see what I want to do here. I want to say implement. Oh, hold on. I've got to turn on my like, key thing in the sidebar. Hold on. I'll be back. <clears throat> All right, I'm back. Now I got my little key overlays. I'm trying to get those on in every video, I just sometimes forget to do it. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, what was I? Okay, we're going to say implements packet of inet. Inet. Why is it not auto -quitting? That's Or whatever. inet handler play client. Not exactly sure why it's not. Okay, there it goes. Oh, probably because I didn't import packet, it got mad. Um, now, I'm actually not going to put anything in here for now. Um, in future videos, I might put some helper classes in here, but for now, it's going to be good. Um, next thing that I want to do is create two packages, one called server and one called client. And basically how I'm going to organize this is everything that's in the server package is sent from the server. And anything that is in the client package is sent from the client. Now, same thing on the server. I'm going to have two packages, one that's going to be sent from the server and one that's going to be sent from the client. Minecraft has a different way of doing this, and I will make sure to put like a... I'll make sure to express why I'm doing it this way, but I find it much easier than Minecraft system for organizing packets and their names. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing it this way. And I'll explain. Yeah, there's one little tricky bit. I'll cover it later. Okay. I need to, like, get on with this. So I'm going to make um, a packet called S packet. I don't have a better name for it. It's going to be all packets that servers send. And so we're going to say extends EC packet. Now it's going to ask us to implement a couple things. Uh, I want to actually make this abstract, too. And the only thing... I am going to implement is write data, because if something is sent from the server, we're not going to write anything. So I'm going to make myself a note, sent from the server, uh, we don't write things, we only read. You know, I, just something to remind myself why I'm overriding this and not using it. And for the client one, I'm going to do the same naming scheme. C packet. I can't think of anything else. 
make it abstract, we're going to say extends EC packet. And in this class, I want to override two things, which is read packet data and process packet. Um, so if we're sending from client, we don't need to read. Um, we'll just copy that down here. We don't need to process. Just, I mean, you guys don't have to take these comments. This is just more of a reminder for me that we are not using these. So yeah, now that we have that, let's create a simple packet that will be sent from the server to the client. Um, this is going to be a really simple packet. It's not even going to hold any data whatsoever. Um, we're going to call it S packet hello world. Just like in Java when you make a hello world. What? Okay, I did not mean to. That sorry, I did not mean to create a class there, or create an interface there. What I was back to saying, um, it's going to be like a super simple hello world. The server just will send this packet and it will print into our client hello world into the consoles. Just like any Java beginner hello world program. You want to make sure the system works before getting it super complicated. So we're going to say extends s packet. And we're going to add the unimplemented methods. We got no packet data. This one, make myself a note why I'm not doing anything. And in process packet, let's do system dot out or no, let's print an error stream because um, it will show up yellow and I can actually see it better out of all of the output logs the client spews. Um, and we're going to say the server says hello. I don't know. Something like that. It's, as I said, it's just a test to make sure that when we do the server side stuff, it like all works. Um, so now we need to actually tell Minecraft that we have a new packet that we're trying to register. Um, so what we're going to do is go to net Minecraft network, and then we're going to find enum connection state. And now this is where all the packets are registered. So we want to find this enum called play, which is when we're playing. So there's like different states, so like handshake status when you're logging in um, this is when you're actually playing in the world so i'm going to register all my packets under play because in ec packet we're using play client so we're in the play state um, and they can only be sent during the play state which is pretty much all your packets want to be anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to say this dot register packet now this is where it gets confusing. So if we have a packet that's being sent from the server, we need to register it as enum packet direction dot client bound. But if it's sent from the client, we need to register it as server bound, which if you think about it kind of makes sense, but I really just wish this was just like a, a who is sending it thing. It, it seems backwards in my brain. Um, so we're going to say enum packet direction dot client bound because it is sent from the server. So I'm going to say sent from server equals client bound. Sent from client equals server bound. And now we need to get our packet class. This is s packet hello world dot class. All right. Now we got one more thing that we have to do, um, which we're, we're not going to actually use in this tutorial, but we will use it in the next tutorial, is we need to actually print out the ID that each of these get. So if we kind of look into the code a little bit, um, every packet actually gets assigned an ID, and that's how it tells, like when sending over the internet, it's like, all right, we got packet ID 72, and that might be, oh, you've started to sprint or something. I, that's not the actual packet ID or whatever, but you, you kind of get what I'm saying, hopefully. Or like, here we go, we're going to update a score, which might be packet ID 3. I was clearly not, but you, yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. So we actually got to print out um, where our packet is, so then in bucket we could do some nice hacky reflection magic to inject our packet into bucket. Um... Through a plugin. So what we're going to do is say system dot 
print ln going to say, um, oops, I just put many more of those than I needed to. We're going to say put packet um, plus by map dot size plus uh, packet class dot get name. So that should, for every packet, print out where it's located, uh, or not where it's located, what ID it has. Uh, I would recommend for release that you turn this off, like delete it or comment it out, because it's just not necessary and it just fills up people's logs and then theoretically people could figure out what your packet IDs are, which is not like super bad, but it's you security issue kind of don't really want people doing that. But eh. Eh, for this right now, when we're running an Eclipse, it's fine. So when we run um, this, we should hopefully see once we click the multiplayer button that it should print out all of our packet IDs, and we hopefully, if everything goes well, we should see S packet hello world is also registered. Okay, yeah, sure. Java. Oh, yeah, because that's I just updated my Java. So here we go. We should see everything was printed out, and we see that right here put packet 74 client name packet server hello world. So that's what we're supposed to get. Your number might be different depending on your version, because different packets were added and removed between different versions. So this number might be different for you, but if you're running 1.8.8, .8, you should see 74, but if you don't, it's fine. You just need to remember what this number is for the next tutorial. So, I don't know, write it down, memorize it, something for when you watch the next video. Um, but yeah, that is going to be it for this tutorial. We've successfully, oops, we've successfully registered a packet uh and it appears that it's registered we haven't used it yet but that's what the next tutorial is going to be on so yeah stay tuned for the next one peace